So here's a small exercise that we do, and the questions would be for the sensors. Uh, you have three pieces of sensors and th three pieces of equipment. So what would be the architecture showing this for this uh, uh, simplified pin ID? So you have uh, the sensors, the logic solvers, and you have the final elements. So the RBD shown in there, it is shown this is according to IC61508, or IC oh, according to the standard, the IC standard. So for the sensors, the logic solvers, and the final elements, this is a reliability block diagram. It's a series, in this case, of uh, boxes or subsystems or systems. Uh, so the sensor, it is in series with the logic solver, it is in series with the final elements. And what that means is that we need the sensors to work, the logic solver to work, and the final elements, they all have to work in order to succeed, in order to have success. So it's different from the fault tree on which the thinking is all, all the time uh, the opposite from reliability block diagram. So what would be the answer? The answer here for the uh, three elements, the three sensors that we have there. In reality, we cannot we, d we cannot say whether it's one out of three, whether one whether it's a uh, two out of three. So in reality, it's a m out of three. Uh, it's for the logic solver is one out of one, and for the final elements, we have the solenoid and the valve in series. So that combination there will be a two out of two. So we have a solenoid most most work, and the valve most work. So two out of two. But I have a, a redundant, a complete redundant um, solenoid and valve beside it. Uh, so then I would have a one out of two of two out of twos. So that would be the final configuration architecture of your final element. And in this case, I hope that you see that it is one out of two of the two out of twos inside there because this is a fail closed uh, valve. If I change the fail close sign in there for a fail open valve, then the situation will change. I will have a two out of two of twos out of twos for each combination of s uh, solenoid and, and valve. And uh, I hope that you can um, see this, uh, grab a little bit of piece of paper and try to do it so that you can realize uh, better how that what I just explained. So for um, one out of two, this is the representation for reliability block diagram. And again, it's very important to have these two elements in parallel that you can see in there. And the only way to know that they are in a one out of two configuration is because I put one out of two inside the circle. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's no <laughs> other uh, way that you can uh, have this uh, architecture here is will always be represented as one out of two because a two out of two would be two boxes in series. But this representation, when you go to a two out of three, then, uh, which has come later on, then the, uh, it, it becomes apparent the need of this circle with the explaining what is it that it is, if it is a one out of two or, or what, or a, with respect to two out of three, if we had a third element there, A, B, C. So one simple way to represent um, the reliability of this uh, small system of um, one out of two, for example, is to create um, a truth table or a logic table. So you have element A and B, and when you have a one, that I that means you have success. So if I have two elements and they have one one, so my final uh, state is a one. Yes, both of them, both of them are working, so I have success. I have a one. And in the other two cases, you have a zero, one, and a one, a zero. That means that at least one of them is working or will work o on demand. So that means that my system will execute the function correctly. So I have a one for a zero, one, and I will have a one, two also for the one, zero. So those are the conditions for at least one of the two must work, or at least one of the two works. So I have a truth table of three ones, and well, if both of them are not working, I have a zero, 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 and that also have to be taken into account when we when we are adding 
the reliabilities of uh, these pieces of equipment. So if you have those two pieces of equipment and each one is the has a specific uh, reliability uh, number, pr reliability is probability of success of that number. So I have probabilities of success of A times multiply by probabilities of success of element B. But if you have one of them fails, well, that is the probability of failure of A times probabilities of success of B. And, s uh, and the next one will be pro reliability of or probability of success of A, probability of failure of B, and probability of failure of A, probability of failure of B at the end. So I multiply those ones and I add them. So you can see here the total reliability of the system will be R plus B minus R times B when you do the addition of all of, of all those. Uh, if all elements are identical, you might create a small f formula, right? So these two become two R's, R A, reliability A plus reliability B minus, if these two multiply, they are square, so you get two R minus r squared. So pay attention because this is making the assumption that both elements are the same. So this will be a m out of n connection f um, example for a 1 out of 2. So in this case your total reliability will be the addition of all those boxes, right? So you will get at the end what we just discussed. <coughs> and this is for the two out of three, and this is what I was talking about before. You have the three elements, and then the only way that you know which combination or what are the conditions of those three elements in parallel are described on the um, on the center there. You say two out of three, and we can create exactly the same table or component state st table. The state is working, 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 so that I get a one. So I will have a one as long as at least two of them are working. So two of them are working here. This A and C are working. A and B are working. So this is a total combination of possibility of any of two of them that are working. All the rest of the cases, I cannot say that the system is successful. I, I have to have at least two working. So if I have three working, that's also OK. And I apply the same rules that I applied before. So reliability of A, probability or, of success of B, times probability of, of C, and so on. And taking into account the, the failures of those elements, probabilities of failure of B. And then I add them all, right? As uh, we did before, we add those terms. And at the end, we get the total reliability, which be reliability of, of uh, the system will be the reliability of A times reliability of B reliability of A times C plus B, C, and so on. And we, we can always change, um, instead of talking about all the uh, probabilities being probabilities of success, well, we can change them, all of them, to probabilities of failure. And this two out of three is a special case that you can see uh, very well here that is, it resembles very much with respect whether you're working with reliabilities with probabilities of success or when you're working probabilities of failure, they somehow are very um, equivalent to each other. So it's, it's they're kind of uh, in the middle of this tug of war between success and failure. And they seems to give you the best of both worlds with respect to probabilities of failure and probabilities of success. So this is a special case for the two out of three. It's interesting to know that, and we might go there a little bit more in the future, and I'll show you that. Uh, <coughs> so it's very important also to notice from the point of view of Xavier Profiler that we have, if all elements are the same, so we have, we can group them, and we will have certain point of view of formula here. Uh, we can, if reliability of A equals reliability of B equals reliability of C. And in this case, we haven't included the common cause or beta factor. And we didn't include it either for the one out of two, which has to be there. So to this formula, we would have to add 
at the end a, a probability of failure plus common cause of the probability of failure of the worst uh, probability of failure and the amount of, of the components that you have available there. So this is um, the formula, that's the way it would look like for a 1 out of n, for example. Um, so you will have, uh, without the beta factor, you will have probability of failure of the amount of A times B, and so on, uh, plus the common cost factor that we calculated before, or that we found by asking all these questions very qualitatively, and we multiply it by the probability of failure on the amount of the worst component. If all components are the same, well, you pick any one of we do. However, sometimes you might have one component from one manufacturer and one component from the other one, and their probability of failures on demand might be different, so you pick the worst. Or you might have, for example, different technologies. You might have a switch or an at and a transmitter. So which is the one that is probably going to have the worst probability of failure? the switch. So here you will have probability of failure of on demand of the switch times probability of failure on demand of the transmitter and uh, at the end you will add a percentage I will say 10% of the probability of the on demand of the switch right and then of course you have to subtract the other part of the beta. Beta will be if it is 10% that would be 0.1 here will be 1 minus 0.1 is 0.9 so that everything is balanced now so what you are adding here the other part that is uh, um, the subtraction of beta 1 minus beta it is put uh, it is taken into account on this side of the question so when you go for a parallel system and um, you go to a 2 out of 3 that this will be the equation taking into account the beta factor so if you see this PFDs and so on, this formula is what it was just calculated in here. So it's the same one. So now you see that in order to work with uh, this system, we only need to know about the probability of failure and demand of each equipment individually, and then by using the rules of reliability uh, block uh, diagrams, um, we can calculate any combination of any architecture uh, very simply, right? So this is what we do. What we do in Safeguard Profiler. So this is an example that we're going to explain what is the, the other side of Safeguard Profiler is that you now we're going to go into seal verification. And seal verification is to verify that the probability of failure on demand related to a sealed, um, sealed level, it is uh, meeting the required um, probability of failure on demand found out during the layer protection analysis, right? So this is now the continuation. This is what um, we're going to get into. So what are the factors that affect the probability of failure on demand? The mean time to restoration, proof testing, test coverage, with respect to the safe, um, to the life, the useful life of that equipment. Also have diagnostic coverage, safety failure fraction also has an influence. The safety failure fraction will be related to diagnostic coverage and the safety failure fraction will give us the hardware fault tolerant that we have to use that tables from IEC 61, 511, 508 to see if we need a redundancy or not or uh, if we need redundancy, uh, what is the har hardware fault tolerant 0, 1, 2 and which we already talked about. We talked about the beta factor and uh, we also talked about the failure rate uh, dangerous and the split of dangerous detected and dangerous undetected with diagnostic coverage. So how do we put all those things together? That's using the formulas at, and that formula exactly as it is, it is inside Safeguard Profiler. Uh, Safeguard Profiler goes a little bit further because if you remember we made an approximation Well, Safeguard Profiler goes back and undo that approximation and uses the actual formula. So this is a, a, an example that I'm going to work with uh, you uh, at the moment and I'm going to show you. You might want to go ahead and do it. <coughs> this is how it would look if we had redundancy right, to the system. So this is no, no redundancy on the final element. This is having redundancy on the final element. 
remember the solenoid and the valve they are in a two out of two configuration we need both of them to work but between the part A and part B we as long as one of set works then that's a one out of two between those two sets in there of two out of two solenoids and valve so in safeguard profiler if they are different we have to understand and we have to tackle and build this inside safeguard profiler which will be a, an example or which will be an exercise that we'll do um, later on so applying exactly what we just talked about before we have our um, in this case we're going to concentrate on, on the final element right so in the final element would be my solenoid valve and the XV valve uh, and they are in a 2 out of 2 configuration in a serious configuration and then have the same thing for the two, uh, XVB and SOVB and of course if these two are in parallel uh, they have a common cause and this will be the common cause is the addition add a uh, common cause factor which is the percentage of beta that was given to us or we that we find out right so this would be in a one out of two combination with a two out of two that means all this block plus so series is plus parallel is multiplication so we multiply the probabilities of failure on demands and we add when they are in series so at the end the uh, formula would be the total probability of failure would be probability of failure of the transmitter pressure transmitter that we showed before the probability of failure of the logic solver so this is one out of one plus one out of one and then we have inside here our SOVA plus the probability of failure on the amount of the valve plus the probability of failure on the amount of the solenoid this one's here multiply multiply by the addition of the other two probabilities of failure on the man of the solenoid and the valve right so we multiply those two and then we have to add the common cause factor and then to balance the equation we have to get the one minus beta in there so the beta factor represents the percentage of failures of one leg of the system that might be affect that may affect the entire system so one leg so if we have uh, uh, two out of three we will have three legs and we still take one leg if you have a four out of uh, two out of four we still take one leg of and add it as a common cost factor percentage uh, the way that we found it or, or the way that is found before right so the methodology is used to calculate the beta factor and also the frequency used in the uh, modeling of the common failures and so on for the uh, diagnostic uh, common causes <coughs> so sometimes you don't get a combination sometimes it's difficult to find out what is the combination of the common cause of the valve and uh, the solenoid and sometimes when you buy these valves and solenoids together you might ask the vendor or the um, the person from which you are buying the equipment say well, you know what I don't want the same valve in both give me different valves in there so now it gets a little bit more complicated now each piece of equipment has its own probability of failure on demand and remember we have to pick which is the worst one so we can continue doing this in the same way that we were thinking before so you have the two out of twos and the one out of two combination and then you get what we're doing now we are separating the valve uh, the valve and the solenoid valve in, in this case uh, and it's still adding them and remember that we have to uh, balance the equation by multiplying here as another term the common cause uh, one minus beta 